uh, Jan and Tim this, uh, you know, T Tim, you tell your story, but um, they it was the um, uh, uh, Nietzsche uh, in Zarathustra, the uh, uh, tightrope walker falls down and uh, he, uh, 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 there's a voice that says uh, that your soul will die before your body. Now, this sort of reminded me of the falling angel, which now, Tim, why don't you tell about it? Hi, Idris. I've heard good reports Hello. about you, that Hi, you're very thanks. astute. Yes, and Thank I would you. like to talk to you about your vision, um, too. That would point. be great. Yeah, That's but great. why don't we, um, I, I'd like to start out with, uh, well, let's just hear, um, Tim had a, a little bit of a vision, and then I'd like to hear a, a dream from Roy, and then... Um, uh, if you have a dream too, you can uh, present it. Your hair yes, is I do. well today. Too. I will share today. What's that? The, okay. I have a dream, uh, the most recent dream I'll share today. Okay, sure. All right. Well, let's start out with Tim, see how many we can get done today. Okay. And I will take notes here. I, I just take notes and then go at her. So why don't you uh, start out, Tim, and then we'll okay. uh, hear one from Roy. So you get ready, Roy. Well, this is just a strange story, you know. I'm always, I'm always drawing, and particularly because of the Nerval conversation we had. What was it last week? Um, I've been drawing a lot of fallen angels and that kind of thing. Like, I'll show you an example. I I put this up on the screen briefly um, last week. Uh, just while we're talking, you know, I'm I'm drawing this fallen angel and trying to to incorporate that. I've done a, a bunch of similar drawings. Um, but then last night I was working on a, um, a drawing that I'd done of, uh, of an anima figure that appeared probably, I don't know, six months or so ago and I often, I often do these figures um, and work on them afterwards as I, you know, I have a pile of drawings and I go through and sort of um, recapitulate them in various ways. Anyway, that's what I was doing with this drawing last night. And let's see if I can find the image for you. And the, uh, as I was working on it, I put it, I, I finished it a little bit and I put it aside. And just at that moment, a fly fell out of the sky, very much like Le Naval's uh, angel. And excuse me, goose pimples. Can, can you see this drawing? Yeah, that's actually a fly. I thought. It was so the fly it was on my, my, uh, you know, was, was struggling. It falls dead on, on my drawing. And I was kind of astonished. Uh -huh. If it hadn't fallen exactly where it was, I would have just thrown it in the garbage and not, not mentioned anything. But it appears right in the hand of this Anima figure, who, who is, you know, this is me kind of as a supplicant in front of the Anima. And it looks like she's harvested this fly, just like she harvested me. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, it is, uh, you know, the fallen angel made my heart ache. The, the picture of the fallen angel. But, and, but then this is just uh, took my breath away a little bit, you know, and the fact that it is, it has this image, uh, you know, uh, of the, the, fa the, the fallen uh, angel of, of that he's been de-sold, you know, there's something that uh, he, um, at least for Narval, I mean, it was a symbol of the, uh, uh, of of the subsequent events of uh, of uh, or or um, what's her name Orly uh, dying and uh, uh, yeah yeah but anyway uh, yeah that was and that happened last night I'm glad you were touched by that book yeah because I the, really was as well um, I just that, that I just, whole aspect of of the fallen angel is such a such a powerful archetype and there's i've discovered other stories about this too um 
I mentioned in the chat last time that Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote a story about this. And it's apparently appeared in other places in, in Western cultural history. Um, it, it's a fascinating image to me. Uh, Roy, you, you're, you know a lot, a lot about uh, the Romance uh, era, uh, Romantic era, uh, you know, of which Nerval was a great um, representative. I mean, some people think one of his, his, his uh, late novels was one of the best ones ever written, but, you know, he's just such a tragic figure. Uh, do you have anything to s say about uh, the Romance period, Roy, or? Uh, yeah, well, uh... I like that period because it was sort of a reaction to the Industrial Re Revolution. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was just a last stab at trying to bring the gods back alive, you know, to revive paganism. It, it, it's, it's reminiscent of the, um, of the area, era of the troubadours and the um, er, era of the grail legend. Yes, back to the medieval period. Yes, uh, where where they it was the reaction to the medieval scholasticism. Hi, Kevin. And yeah, go ahead. A, a funny uh, thing that I laughed about Nerval is that, you know, he wasn't grounded at all, no. and it said that he he went his his uh, love died before he did, and yes. he went to the cemetery, and he couldn't find her grave. I mean, that's how a space cadet that he was. I mean, I thought that was funny. I don't know. If it was funny. He was sent. That. He was sent the to the the humor of going to, to the to cemetery the Mont not where being able to find was, his beloved yes. grave. I, I thought yeah, that looks, was very humorous. Yes, he looks all over for it, and he says, "Well, I could probably find it on the death certificate," but then for some reason he burns all the letters and the death certificate, and then he goes out on his uh, little, um, you know, he wasn't going to return, says goodbye to all his friends, and leaves a note to his, his landlady, who I think was his aunt, said that don't wait up for me. Tonight is a night of black and white, you know, uh, and, uh, but um, it's just such a, see, it's just such a detective story, that whole thing. I mean, the, um, it, it's just such a, and, and you know what, the people who read him and, and really admired him, uh, what they really liked about this um, sort of fall into madness and, and, and um, eventually uh, doing away with himself is that he, they says, lucid up to the very last moment, lucid and extremely expressive. You know, and I, I asked, um, uh, Jan to describe that garden that he described where where he knows the name of every plant and tree and flower and and tells you all about them and there was the hibiscus and the these and there was the arbors and you know I mean he's just a he's he's really an amazing amazing person but he it's kind of like I don't know if you ever heard the this the Goethe's uh, the story of young Werther you know where his whole life is just destroyed by a, a unrequited love, you know? And this one was really unrequited because this uh, girl, oh, who I think her real name was Jenny Combs or something like that, um, was a uh, not interested in him at all. She, she marries a stage manager and then proceeds to have about four or five kids, gets real heavy. I mean, she gained a lot of weight. And uh, yet, yet he still, and, and that's why he, he just um, dismisses her. And this was his fatal fault as a ordinary woman of our uh, century, you know, which is um, the whole thing is just, and then what Young liked about it is that this was very reminiscent of the Red Book, you know. So anyway, it's beautiful, Tim. I mean, I, I think that's very beautiful. Why don't we hear uh, one of Roy's dreams and then we could hear uh, one of either Gary or Idris's dreams and uh, uh, unless you had anything more, Tim. Oh, you don't? Okay. All right, well, uh, 
Did you have anything more to add, Tim? Well, I just wonder what what the group's thoughts are on on the fallen angel. If that's a if that's something like an anima figure or a a, a spirit figure or something about the um, uh, maybe the cognitive element in the human psyche. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would say let's just take Nerval's fallen angel. You know, it was um, it was his really his life principle. Don't don't you think Gary or or Roy or Charles or Kevin? I mean, it was really uh, or his the life principle in him. It just seemed to me yeah. like like the tightrope walker falling off the tightrope in. Except a tightrope uh, walker. You know, is in the and is in the wrong element, but an yeah. angel is in the in the heavens is in their own element. Yeah, and it's fluttering hard to stay up, and then mm -hmm. it suddenly collapses <clears throat> into the garden, which is mm -hmm. too small to contain it, and so it it falls over the edges and lies there. Uh, this this is after he goes into the mysterious courtyard. <laughs> You know, of with many rooms that he didn't recognize, and uh, uh, and it it it's um, yeah. Well, anyway, what do you, Gary or Roy, think, or Kevin or Charles? Well, I have sort of a, a different take. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, appeared to be an aristocrat, yeah. and he might have been fourth, fifth generation, and he. Uh, was sort of removed from the peasant life, everyday life. So it was easy for him to do academic stuff and to have a, a dream, a dream like inner life. And, and of course, he's going to have these figures. But as Jung said, I believe life gives you lots of hints. And eventually, pow, you know, it makes the point. And so his life eventually turned on him and started going downhill you know, hence the fallen angel. That's my take. Oh. Yeah, it was, uh, yes, it, it, it just seemed, it was, it, the one thing I think you, you have to say is it was an omen, a bad omen. You know, yes. It was an omen of uh, something going uh, very, very wrong. In, and uh, everything that followed it uh, sort of just um, confirmed that. Hi, Ivan. Nice to see you. I mean, I'm. You notice, <laughs> Ivan? I really like your dream. Uh, yes, that we had last time. Thanks, Ivan. Did everybody get to hear that dream? That was a very good dream. Uh, can I? Um, I just wanted to comment on Tim. Yes, sure. Um, mm -hmm. uh, about the fallen angel. Um, I don't know. If in dream analysis or in Jung case often likens the fallen angel to the self, basically. Um, but I think what Jung says, which is very important, is that, you know, when an archetype is sort of incarnated into the ego, there is a death for that very archetype. Whereas for, for the ego to go into this archetypal realm, Yes, there, there is a, a death of something that... Yeah, do you remember what Jung said about that, um, uh, that vision? He said it had no lysis. I mean, it had no, um, it had no ending. And he says that that was a, usually a fatal sign. Mm. You know, I mean, just the, 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 the angel died and he said that he got a bad feeling from it because it was, uh, um, you know, it did not have an ending. Now, if we said that about every dream, we, we almost all our dreams would be fatal. So I, I don't know. I mean, that was what I thought when he said that, that a lot of our dreams say that, you know. Uh, now, I, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Alfred. Alfred Cuban, but I mean, he was the one that uh, did, I, I don't know if I can share this thing. I'm not as good at, my computer for some reason does not like to share things like as good as, uh, uh, here we go show up or not but it's not a nearly as good as uh can you see that or not 
there where it says above 40 maybe yep, yep. Yeah, yeah okay yeah. well yeah i don't like that as good as tim's you know <laughs> but how do i stop it there we go <laughs> okay all right well um how about uh roy do you have a dream ready oh yes yeah go right okay, ahead well, let's go ahead uh, let's talk about arms I'm gonna, my dream's gonna have the left arm instead of the right arm in Tim's anima. Okay. And I had this dream uh, Wednesday and the, I don't remember a lot of details, but the vivid part is I'm standing there looking at my shadow and my shadow has my left arm and my left arm is healed. It's perfectly good. And I knew the shadow was going to give me my arm back. And then I woke up. That, that is very good. Now, let me, it's the, now, um, this is, you, you in real life have a left arm, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, okay. And um, uh, now, as far as the shadow, was this just a male figure? This, uh, the dream image picked. A particular person that I know. Okay, but my it was opposite. A, yes. You're just and that's a male. why I knew it was my shadow. He's yes. just the opposite personality that, that, than what I am. Okay. So the shadow, who I often meet in in, in cellars, um, has your left arm. So now the left arm would be the arm, the 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 at being active in the unconscious uh, world. See, the right arm would be, or would be being um, active, doing things. I mean, what else do we do anything with other than our arm? You well, know? the amazing thing about this, uh, when I was 12, I was playing football and I uh, snapped my left arm completely to the bone. And oh, I didn't boy. get rehabilitated and it sort of uh, colored my whole life and of course it was traumatizing and to see it healed in that dream was spectacular now isn't that interesting okay now what what um the way where i'm going with this roy is that um in the unconscious the shadow who's not always the negative shadow i mean the shadow is he's your opposite but he's also has some links. Uh, he's he's more in more. He, he resides more in the personal unconscious than the anima does, but he also resides in in the collective unconscious a little bit. And he he has your left arm, the arm of being active in the inner world, and it is completely healed now. You said something about that, that he was going to give it to you eventually? Is that No, he's going to give it back to me. It's just that I woke up before he's he did, give... but I, I knew he was going to give it back to me. Okay. And, and were, were you, um, at that time in the dream, missing your left arm? Oh, uh, no. Or it was just the healed no, arm uh, he was going to give I, He was going to give me the healed arm. Yes. Okay. Now, doesn't this say to you, I mean, this is what it says to me, if I was having this dream, you know, the, the, the arm is, is what, what else do we use as human beings? I mean, the fact that we're bipedal in the first place, you know, that we're one of the few animals uh, that stands upright and it, it's, it's front limbs are not legs. They are things that we do uh, active, you know, and, um, and rather than um, using them to climb limbs like um, other primates, they are used to uh, be, we're the tool maker, you know, we're homo habilis, you know, and uh, so, but uh, the, the right arm has to do with the outer world and the left hand uh, being active in the outer world being an active participant in the outer world. The left arm, more, more than any other appendage, and you can tell me if this I'm wrong on this, more than any other appendage, the left arm is a symbol of being active in the inner world. 
And this arm, which before was, um, uh, was not healed is now healed. Now, to me, this says that, um, that the unconscious is giving you the tool, tool maker or the tool user an arm that can use the tools to be active in the inner world. Now, what do you, what, where do you, now I'm just saying that you, why don't some other people jump in? But I, I love this. Don't you love this dream, Roy? Well, I, I have a little different take. I agree with what you say, but I'm coming yeah, from a different place. Yeah. Uh, yes. I feel like the shadow has our inferior function. Yes. And I'm like you. My inferior function is the senses. Mm -hmm. I'm a feeler, but my inferior function is the senses. And sensation has a lot to do with feeling your body and physical. Yes. And uh, I yes. feel like I feel like the shadows holds my health, which is the sensation function. It's it's the key to my health. And for me to uh, work with sensations and the physical body, which I have for the past 10 years, I feel like the shadow is going to release my health. It's going to give him, give me my health back. Well, that, that is, um, uh, this, that was also, I think that this, there was something that was puzzling me a little bit was that the arm is such a bodily representation of, of, the left hand side and as as a as a inferior function sensation you know and so my superior functions intuition but i'm a thinker i and i don't know of the other intuitives in this uh, group spent my whole life saying i'm not comfortable in my own skin you know i didn't feel embodied i didn't feel like i had my feet on the ground I felt um, very uh, um, disconnected from the earth, uh, not embodied. Now I feel that what I'm doing, the work I'm doing right now is slowly becoming embodied. Uh, I can't really describe it right now, but I mean, a lot of my uh, dreams and visions are very earthy. What do you think, Charles? Uh, what are you? Are you uh, intuitive? Um, aren't you? Really, what what came to me was whatever you lost in uh, whatever you lost in life when your arm was injured when you were young. The shadow will give that to you. Um, what, what whatever whatever you lost when you injured your arm is within the shadow now. It, it couldn't it could be, I don't know how to say this, but it, uh, it could, things couldn't be lived. And um, now, yeah, they're in the shadow. And, uh, but the shadow seems to be willing to, willing and able to lend you uh, that part of your life back. In, in, you know, in an as if metaphorical kind of analogous way. But that's all I got. Well, and let's, let's, yeah, and let's, um, let's recapitulate what Roy said, because Roy has a, uh, sees this as a culmination of some work he's doing. Let's, let, could you state that again, Roy, that, um, Uh, you've been doing in, in, uh, since your uh, sensate is your inferior function and uh, feeling is your is your uh, strongest auxiliary function. So you're an intuitive with feeling as your auxiliary function. And now, how, what do you think? How do you, how do you describe your relationship with the body again? Or your own uh, body. Well, uh, if if sensation is the inferior function, uh you need to rectify. Now, you could do it like you're doing it, Craig, like take your ideas and articulate them in public, which you're doing. You're doing a really good job at it. 
I, I see that as a sort of a rectifying, you know, concrete, which is, mm -hmm. uh, is putting it into the world of sensation, you know, but for me, it's into been the, the body. Yeah, from in, into the outer world is concretizing, which is sort of a sensate function, I think. But I'm trying to work it out through the body. And that's how I do it. But and what it's helping you're saying gives me a it's great sense of longing. My thinking. Yes. Well, what you're saying is awakening longing in me. So I know that you're saying something that I need myself. Yeah, since I just feel it as you're right talking. Now. Yeah, I felt yes. little vibrations of of just um, of uh, that I I'm I am impoverished as well in what you're speaking. What do you We're think, Gary? Well, the, the thing that really struck me about this is this really felt just like a psychodrama, like we might do in like one of those family things where they position. So you know, if, if it was a psychodrama, I mean, it was like, oh my gosh, I mean, this is, you know, it's very much like what Charles said and what Roy has been saying as well. It's like, you know, this was taken from you and now it's going to be given back. It's, it's uh, you know, you know and, and let's keep working on this a little bit because I, I think the more attention we give it, the better. Why don't we li listen from Kevin, Ivan, and and address and then give Tim the last word. What do you think? Kevin? Yes. Um, Roy, can I just ask you what your psychological type is? Do you know that? Uh, Roy's type? Yes, psychological type. Is he an INTJ or INFJ? I, I, he, is, he is an intuitive. Probably INFJ. With, uh, yeah. Probably an uh, INFJ. Uh, yeah, I think you're probably, yeah. if you're sensation, yeah. You're an INFJ, okay. with sensation. Okay, so, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I like that. In, I think everyone said something. Yeah, I think um, what Charles says also resonates, and what everyone says resonates. But um, there is a good book on lectures on Jung's typology. This one. Oh, yeah. Um. So Maria Louise von Franz says that the inferior function is a doorway to the unconscious. And I, I feel like it has already been said, but, I, but this um, to revitalize your inferior function through your shadow, uh, because yeah. as Craig says, the shadow is already also connected to the collective unconscious where the source of new energy resides. And if you are an INFJ or an INTJ, your inferior function would be extroverted sensing. And extroverted sensing is a particular way of consciousness, which is different from introverted sensing. Because for INFJ and INTJ, the introverted sensing is the most suppressed function of them all. And introverted sensing would not be I mean, your inferior function would be extroverted sensing, but introverted sensing would even be more inferior function, which is uh, in John Beebe's, uh, Dr. Beebe's model would be, you know, the demonic function. It's, it's a function you undermine. Okay, so what is those, these two different functions? So for your inferior function would be extroverted sensing, which involves the bodily sensation, but it doesn't involve internally bodily, sens uh, internally bodily sensation. That's why an INFJ and INTJ are very, doesn't often have this sense of inner awareness of hunger, drinking and food. And whereas for, yes. And so if your inferior function extroverted sensing, it, it would be referred to a particular activity which was lost, which would be, you know, including sensory awareness in the external world rather than the internal world. Um, I think is, I think like Charles, like, you know, something that day was lost and perhaps write down your association because there, there are images of parts of yourself and which has now become revitalized through your shadow and shadow is sort of adding this to your repertoire of 
conscious awareness. So something is being added to your conscious awareness, which is just as is sensing. But I think it's a particular type of sensing. Hmm. Well, that's 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 uh, at least now. Let me just mention that real quick. As far as being a uh, have my inferior function sensation is uh, it is extroverted sensation, and and one thing uh, von Franz is about extroverted sensates when they throw a party it's all surfaces you know it's all glitzy and they they're going to invite these people and those people and they have all these party favors and balloons and things but then now emma young was an introverted sensate wonderful introverted very earthy you know that feeling type so she actually uh was uh she, she if she was going to throw a party it would be very mysterious and there will be moments of ritual, you know. So when she throws a party, there's, there's ritual events occur for the introverted sensate, you know. And um, uh, now, now uh, as far as it being, it is the doorway to the unconscious. The shadow, you know, as the as the anima is the is represents the principle of life, and she is a mediator uh, between the inner world and our uh, ego awareness. And yet she is uh, is also the personification of the unconscious. The, the shadow is a little more human, you know, but tends to be a trickster, you know, <laughs> in, involved. But sometimes the shadow, like if, if you're a criminal, the shadow is very angelic, you know, but, um, I, I just want to say, Roy, that uh, as far as resonating, everything, this is just hitting every one of my bells because the sh of the shadow, I'm very unconscious of my shadow. And I mean, uh, Gary was kidding, I hope, about naming the shadow earlier. Were, were you kidding when you said that, Gary? You were saying, let's name the shadow? Oh, well, no, I was serious. I was like, you know, I thought, you know, I, I always call out the oh, elephant okay. in the room. You know, I'm just yeah, well, that's, you know? yes, I know that's what Stuart loves to do. But <laughs> anyway, I'm not very uh, conscious of my own shadow. I don't, and, and like I say, now this is this is another Puer way of Puer does things. Um, you know, the, the idea is the shadow is cast by the light of the ego, you know? And so I'm, this has been my theory is if, 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 uh, if I establish a relationship with the feminine and with the anima, my ego light will lessen. And so my shadow will get smaller. So, I mean, now this is, this is my own theory. So it's totally unrealistic. How about you, uh, Ivan? And then we'll hear from Idris. And then Tim, you'll be the last guy. Uh, just since they, we hadn't heard from those yet, guys yet. Go ahead, Ivan. Yeah, it was just, I was kind of wondering why, why you think it was that it was your shadow handing you the arm as opposed to any other unconscious figure. You want me to answer because that? Because he's a male. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyone can answer that, yeah. Uh, I know this guy, I, I have, my shadow takes different forms, but this guy, he's gay, he has no integrity, he's an orphan, uh, he is a drug addict. I mean, all these qualities that I'm not, I mean, it just fit. You can't fit the description more for a shadow for me. Well, he's a good he's a good hook for projections. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. He he in in real life is not the one we're talking. This about. guy gets my goat. Yeah, in real life. Well, he's a in hook for life. your project. He's right. a hook for the things you don't like about yourself. The shadow. Yeah, he's he's the hook for my shadow. Yeah, but he is. <coughs> but he's. Acting. I know him. I know him. But don't you think in this case, he's acting somewhat benevolently in this dream? Yeah, that's because I have been working with my shadow for years. I, he, he appears in my dream. I recognize him. I, I'm doing dialogue with him. This is a oh, years beautiful. of work. Beautiful. Yeah. See, this is, this is something, too that Roy, you'll uh, need to make clear as you tell your dreams because you've already done a lot of interior interpretation of them. And that's why I said, I, I just sense when, you, uh, when you're talking about body and you're talking about um, uh, the, uh, 
Can you describe that? Just say that one more time, and I'm going to write it down this time. But what was your thinking when you saw the healed left arm and the fact that it was going to be given to you? How would this benefit you? Uh, I was going to get my health back. When As I did. said, it was spectacular to see that. I just felt it was a spectacular event. So he's handing you your health back. So he's handing you a, um, a, a, a reborn body, basically. Or yes, he is. Yes. yes. So he's a reborn or remade body. He's giving back to you. And now, see, this, this, is, a, um, this is a psychological image, too. It, it's, and does anybody else just feel the excitement I'm feeling right now? I just thought it was. Yeah, uh, I just feel a great excitement, uh, but that the that this psychological image of, of a healed body and, and not a maybe a real body, but a healed body. Go ahead, Charles. I was going to say um, I yearn for the days when I had which uh, was not that long ago, but when dreams would give me this very short, simple image where the, everything was it wasn't some long drawn up dream where all these different things are happening and you have to pick it apart. It just gives you one simple little image. And I, um, and yeah, I, I just always love dreams like that. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I, I, you know, I, I did, I had those two Charles, but I noticed lately mine are more like Roy's Roy. Roy, do you mind if you just give a, like a general age of yourself? 70, 70. Okay, well, I'm 65. You know, I, I tend to have dreams that are very um, uh, just sort of like Gary was describing, just a, um, a, a you know, a photo, uh, what do they call those those places where it's just a scene? What, how, what did you call, what you, what'd you call that, Gary? Psychodrama? Yeah, a, a, just a psychodrama, or, or, you know, you go in and you see a, a fit, but this one is just, resonating with um it's radiant it's shining of itself you know is what i i get out of it and yet it is so healing i mean i'm just feeling i mean that uh see i am suffering from the same disease that gary is suffering and i think that's why i feel this what what do you think Idris? i hear that you are fairly astute <laughs> Uh, thank you. Yes. So you're asking my uh, thoughts about, can you hear uh, me clearly? Yes. Yes. Can you, can you comment on Roy's dream? Uh, well, according to uh, my past experience. Uh-oh. I think he's having a little bit of a problem. So I'll, I'll get him back on. Tim, why don't you uh, give a, 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 a comment and then we'll go to... Uh, um, to uh, Roy and Gary, where you you were gonna give us a dream too, weren't you? Or do you have any? Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys are so brilliant. Uh, you you've taken it apart. I I think it's fascinating too, but I don't think I have anything more to add. Okay. You guys nailed it. <laughs> well, um, I I, I want to just capitulate it one one more time, and I I don't think I can give it justice because I I feel that there's a mysterious quality that Roy sees in this that I don't yet see. I mean, that he's said it, but I don't think I can express it out loud. But anyway, um, now, now where, can you tell us where this uh, occurred, uh, Roy? Yeah, I'm sorry. We yeah. got disconnected. Yeah, go ahead. Idris, I, just, I was just gonna ask Roy a, a question. Go and, ahead. and then you, you go ahead. Where, where did that, uh, this occur, Roy? Do you remember in, in what huh? setting? Yes, uh, it was outside in a wooded area. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember I just scaled a high fence, a high woven wire fence, and there was my shadow standing on the other oh, side. It, it, that's, that's a wonderful, beautiful detail. You're outside in a wooded area and you just scaled, uh, what kind of a fence? I call it a woven wire, a woven a wire fence. fence. Okay, and then on, on the other side, in was it in a uh, kind of a very shaded 
area or was it night or day or? Uh, scattered light in the woods. Scattered light. And uh, there you see uh, unexpectedly. Yes. Right? Yes. And uh, what what did you think when you when you saw the shadow there before you even saw he had his left arm? I immediately knew it was my shadow. Yeah. And and then I saw my arm. Okay. Do you think there's any significance that it's your left arm and not your right arm, other than your left arm was injured before? No, that, it's that's because, the most it's because you know that's where it all started when I was yes. twelve. Yes. Okay, so the left arm is very significant, but yeah, I think I'm it's left-handed too. Well, that oh, makes okay, it left-handed, but it's it yeah. also is is yes, yeah. That makes a difference because that is the that's also that even though now I don't know about what left-handed people are versus right-handed people, but the left-hand path seems to always be um, young. Conscious. When I'm, I'm in my active imaginations, I can never turn to the right and see anything. I always can only see out of this eye. Okay, what do you think, Idris? I'm I'm sorry you keep getting bumped. Sometimes yeah, if you I turn your video, the phone call, call exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As I started talking, a phone call came, and as okay, I sure. declined the phone call, we got disconnected as well. So sorry. No Lord. problem. Yeah. I love your room. Yeah, let me know Thanks. if the. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if 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 you if the video or audio gets uh, frozen, please let me know. I will I will stop the video so yes, we can okay, at least great. smoothly talk forward. Uh, so uh, usually for those people who sure. have siblings, hands mean siblings in dream. Mm -hmm. But uh, a, I studied palmistry before. In palmistry, uh, the right the left hand is the destiny with which a man is born and the right hand is how life turns out to be what he does and how he changes his destiny so the manifest experience destiny for a man in palmistry is seen from the right hand for a female it's just the reverse they are born with the right hand destiny but what a female will actually experience depends on how the shape and the lines and everything of the left hand is so for a man, left hand is the birth destiny, the nature or biology with which they were born. Mm -hmm. But then for many people, not everyone, but a minority, big minority, uh, their right and left would have two different information. And it just means that they use their personal will and intention and um, they, they manifested a different destiny from which the biology actually offered them. So occasionally people will be much stronger. Uh, men would be much stronger. Uh, strong men will have much better right hand uh, information than left hand. Uh, on the other hand, left is the spiritual information with which a person is born. So it's the transcendent destiny. But the manifest destiny is the right hand. It's a wonderful amplification of left and right. No, no, this is, don't you agree, Roy? I love that. Oh, yes. And I noticed with looking at people's it, faces, it, it's, it the, helps. Left, the left side of their face usually shows their, uh, their nature, while the right side of their face usually shows how they develop their personality. So people who are really, um, let's discuss eyes. People who have bigger right eyes than small uh, and left eye is smaller. I think the video is frozen. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Now you see, so I got people, a big left eye different. and a little right eye. Yeah. See, look at I. Okay. Got, so for people who have two different sizes of eyes, mm -hmm. a person who has a big left eye are born brave, but with smaller right eye, what they do is they live their life as a shy and modest person. They, they try not to uh, assert themselves too much. They try to allow others to have a say to like a voice in, around them. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I've seen a lot of journalists and people who, um, sometimes people who are from really um, low profile families, but they end up becoming famous through their own sheer hard work. They will have bigger right eyes. 
So they were born in a very uh, shy and inhibited surrounding, but they used their will to increase their personal courage. And same is true with the right proportion of the face versus left. People who have used, um, unfortunately, sorry for the stereotypes. I hope anyone who fits this, uh, they forgive me and it may not be true exactly for them. But let's say uh, a lot of criminals and people who like easy money and all that, their right side of their face would be really skinny and not uh, well muscular. While the left side would be, um, how to say it, uh, would be of normal proportion. Well, let's stick to but palmistry. If they have real... Can you stick okay. to palmistry for a second? Sure. Because I thought that was... Let's go ahead back to there, yeah. Where we were getting somewhere. Sure. Is is let's, let's stick with the hands now let's let's go yes. again and just to describe the left uh, the amplification that we're doing here the the, the shadow sure. is holding the left arm now the the thing that really i i think i like uh is the left hand and is the hand uh, of the destiny that you were born with and the right yes. hand is how life unfolds Yes. How you okay. uh, no. how you use your will and intention to unfold the life? Yes. Yes. See now that actively that Obstacle. kind of is the most relevant to the dream. I think is mm. uh, and and I it, that's a clue. I think a little bit of a clue. I'm and now I'm somewhat the the two things that are puzzling in in Roy's dream, and and it's a very mysterious dream. I don't like to touch it too directly because I think it's it's yes. it's very much more mysterious than I think Roy. Well a lot of psychologists say that the interpretation but of the I dream is the dream it, itself. So the clearest yes. meaning of the dream is within the dream itself. Uh, yeah. whatever when we verbalize it we approximate it we take like we travel farther. But well, that's what it. Hillman Hillman says don't worry if you don't understand the dream the dream understands you you know yeah so but but what i'm thinking is is mysterious about this dream is is a a a, a past uh roy uh, uh of, of 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 in the veil of sorrows of a left an injured left arm you were left left handed and um now the shadow who is really someone of your um that you you have a difficult relationship with and probably don't like very well is now holding the key to the healing of a very long uh uh, uh journey uh with that was not exactly um that that had certain elements of sorrow in it what, what do you think roy i'm not I see. I don't want to touch that too directly. No, that that sounds good. Uh, actually, I've, I've known uh, this guy for 20 years, and he lives with a friend that died recently uh, that I knew for 30 years. And uh, when Al died, I'll call this guy David, and he was uh, staying with this guy named Al that died. And uh, when Al died, you know, I, I wrote David and I, and I told him that he did a really good job taking care of Al mm -hmm. and like I was proud of him. And that was maybe a couple months ago. And, and I'm really glad that I did that. Uh, can you describe your, um, your active imaginations with your shadow? Uh, actually, I do active imagination all day because I'm that type of person. I have an incredible imagination. Well, I am, I'm very uh, jealous, but I, I got a day job. Way and it was beat out of me, but they couldn't get it all out. <laughs> but I'm, I'm wondering, yeah, go ahead. I mean, you, go ahead, Idris. I'm wondering if you have recently made a promise to someone because traditionally hand touching hand is a promise. It's like handshake. So maybe, that's requiring a fulfillment of that promise uh no no promises no. to anybody lately okay. that i can recall no it's that's good as long as you don't remember then you're not guilty well it does make, <laughs> it, it does kind yeah, of make I think, me think um 
it, it is almost like a uh, relationship gesture from the shadow uh, to uh, to extend a hand to you. But uh, I don't know. That might seem kind of uh, uh, corny or gimmicky, but it it's almost seems like a relationship gesture. I, I think, feel that way. Yeah, I think most in most cases, and and you know this this is sort of responding to Idris to your vision of of the of the, all the people on the stretchers, um, and and you were questioned. I think that you just were were you seeing something that was happening in the future, and then you ask, well, what does this have to do with my soul? But you you know what I think that most yes. most dreams. I think in this case, this vision is an exception, the one you had, because I think it was really a, um, uh, had to do with a foreshadowing of an earthquake. Yeah, and it was in waking hours too, so that's yes, another thing. Yes, I think, I think the earthquake was foreshadowing. You know how animals can always tell that there's a, mm. uh, either a tsunami or a something yes. coming, that there's a foreshadowing. But you ask about the soul aspect of it. So what, what I'm thinking that, that now this is my own opinion and it's just my own opinion. And yes. it's, it's probably has to do the fact that I'm an intuitive is that, that dreams, the dream maker in most cases is, is asking us for it. It's our attention and to stop being so willful in the ego and to uh, have a more living relationship with a, a living um, uh, unconscious within us, which is the, is is is, ma is soul making. Now, uh, in 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 this case, Roy, um, do you think there's any soul making going on? I mean, what what do you? Oh think? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I have some incredible anima dreams. And, and this dream is specifically about the arm. Oh, yes. The shadow, my shadow hangs out with uh, my what, animal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're connected. Yeah, see, that's it's what, a lot of contamination. Yeah, that's what I think. Roy, did you make a promise to yourself? Because promises could be internal, especially like you're saying shadow. So that would be your own inner being. I would say I made a commitment to uh, have a relationship with my shadow and to get my body back. 10 years yeah. ago, I made this commitment. Yeah. Yeah. I, Has there I, you know, been I, any lapses? Like, uh, is there any change recently in your relationship? No, I have such clarity. It's unbelievable. I haven't, I've just been steady on this 24 7 for 10 years. This is beautiful. Yeah. Amazing, really. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just was saying last night, I had a, uh, uh, I was asking uh, if I could propitiate the dream maker and get better dreams. And, and I suddenly started hearing this, uh, this voice speaking to me, telling me, no, you don't do anything with the dreams we send you already. Well, why should we send you more dreams? You know, I mean, that it was just scaring me because it was coming out. I was actually spoke, I was speaking it. But um, I, I would say if you're doing Jungian psychology and you're looking at dreams through the Jungian lens, I mean, the idea uh, in most cases, in all cases really, is, um, is to uh, create uh, the philosopher's stone. You know, it's to, um, is to create the symbol of meaning. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, you do that through uh, the third, which is the soul. You know, we have this, we're, we're, we're told that there's spirit in the uh, earthly world realm and there's nothing in between. And what Hillman says, there sure as hell is, there's the soul. That's the third thing. That's what he wrote about in the in this book and, and the pandemonium of, of images. And this is where the philosopher's stone is. And the whole idea is that the this soul making unites um, uh, opposites, opposites that, that, that create reality can't ever unite except in this um, third realm of soul, you know? But anyway, Roy, I mean, I, I still don't think we've solved the mystery of this dream. 
Can you give us any more clues? Because it's just too mysterious. Wow. You know, it seems obvious, but I think it's more, way more mysterious. You know, I would think it's just that the left arm, you're be giving the arm of action in the inner world. But from what you've added to it, I don't think it's that simple. Well, it's not mysterious to me. It's spectacular. Yes. Um, yes. Well, see, that's, just... that's the object of, if it was, I was having this dream. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Kevin. Oh. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was thinking like, uh, it's, I think it's already been said, like, I, I think it's, it's not just the shadow as such. Like I said, it, you already said it, your shadow is often contaminated when the, with the anima. And it's not always a bad thing. And your shadow also was a drug addict. You know, a drug addict is, is a connection to the self as well, like, you know, in, in a different way. So I felt like when he took your arm, you know, it wasn't just your shadow as such. It was, you know, it was like a contamination with the anima and the collective unconscious, like I said, you know, with, with a drug, um, which is the which is in essentially the life force. Uh, so, so, yeah, so, but like, you know, we can't do justice to your dream. I think you have worked with it so like you're like, so many years, like we could spend probably a few days on this dream, even though it's so simple. Well, yeah, I mean, it's so, so beautiful. As far as the addiction, you know, the anima is the transformative aspect of, of she's, the, she's the one who transforms. Uh, she's, she's not the, gr the great mother. She's the transforming feminine. And this is, this is the one that creates um, personality number two. Yet uh, uh, she has a negative transformation aspect too. And that's addiction and alcoholism, you know? So if, if you're seeing uh, in the shadow is ad addiction, he's related to the, um, to the negative, uh, what, what, what Eric Neumann calls the young witch. You know, uh, he's related to the young witch, and you know where Young told uh, uh, Bill Wilson that spiritus contra spiritum. You know, the the only way that that there's either um, addiction or there's the transform form, transformative uh, feminine, or there's the this addictive feminine. So the, the, this Roy, I think sometimes that shadow, if it if it's related to drugs or addiction. Is is re, is related to the? Uh, um, I'm, I don't know whether it's relevant, but uh, I just was going by some what Kevin was saying. But um, anyway, I would just sum it up as as this uh, as the simple way of, of, of summing that up is that um, your your body is um, you're being given your body back, your healed body back. which at, at that point is, um, it, it seems to me like it's almost an alchemical transformation. You know, I mean, it's almost an alchemical, alchemical creation that you've created this new vessel uh, of, of life. Of, of, uh, it's, it's like uh, the water, you've been given the water of life through, uh, but in, in bodily form. The, this healed left arm, you know, and uh, so there's a, li a little bit of an aspect of, of here, of 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 having the veil, the veil lifted from the grail. I don't know. What do you think? It's what it feels like to me. Yes, I mean, there's an aspect of something that was veiled before had had it lifted off. And now it's more uh, manifest and it's manifest yes. in a healed left arm, you know, which you, I don't think you've seen before. Don't you think this was sort of an, a, a very um, surprising image that you had, I didn't, have you seen a healed left arm before? No, it's so creative. Yes. You know, out of the blue. Yeah. I mean, so, and so and it's, I, go ahead. I just want are, to go ahead. Sorry. No, you first, Lisa. Uh, arms are symbols of courage. And uh, in astrology, uh, arms connect with Mars and soldier. 
Yeah, it 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 is. Um, yeah, it it is. Um, in this case, though, um, we want to stick with Roy's um, soul making. You know, it isn't really. We're not really telling his fortune. We want to kind of stick with um, the fact that Roy is um, uh, is 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 at, at the age of uh, life like myself where um, we're, we're trying to return to the beginning and mm. sort of mm. I was just saying uh, spiritual again. courage in, in spiritual courage yeah. Yeah, spiritual yeah spiritual courage yes and then, yes it is it is uh, well the arm is always going to be something to do with with active uh, active uh, some kind of active thing I mean we're it, we're very unusual can you, do you know of any other animals that have arms that are not used for just almost specifically for climbing you know I mean uh, like the other primates we very rarely use our arms for climbing it's a it's a we're a very mysterious animal you know as far as our shape of our bodies you know and but our anyway. arms follow uh, follow what our intention says it ha doesn't have a will of its own so it's pretty much in surrender so that's the spiritual part especially if it comes in a dream yes can well, i just add something very yeah. quickly um, I, I think it's also important uh, when he talks about the scattered light you know that like go sort of that in the forest beautiful. just yeah and i feel like this is a subtle form of uh, luminatura like you know, the archetypes in heavens are like the stars and they have a luminosity by their own. And I feel like this is a personified form of that. Um, so when you enter into your shadow realm, which is in the forest, there is still this illuminatura sort of um, uh, reflective in a pers uh, personified form. That was so such a lovely image. That I think is also, yeah, it was, I think, very important. It's, it's not just unconscious as wood but there was a light in it like as a, yeah. let's let's just go over that a little bit because it's so beautiful you know you're outside in a wooded area and then you scaled a woven fence so uh you know it's woven you know there's warp and woof so it's, it's kind of like i went over the middle plane into the unconscious there's the shadow. Now, I, I often do this in the basement, but you go over the middle plane into a, a wooded area where the light is diffused and it's scattered. And the wood, the forest area represents um, uh, uh, the unconscious or, uh, you, you know, the um, non-ego realm, let's put it that way. And uh, there stands the shadow who who you seem to be at peace with. And because of your efforts, it is, is, is giving you, is holding the gift. It's, it's like it's holding the golden sphere or, so, or so something. It's holding the, the healed left arm. And now it's not offering it to you. It's just letting you look at it. But you know that at some point you're going to be given. How did you know that, Roy? How did you uh, know that it was going to be given to you? It or, was an intuitive uh, thing. It's not rational logic, but it was just yeah. a strong intuition. I, I felt, you know. That, How did you think okay, it was here going it is. to be given? Here it is. This, I'm, yes. I'm gonna, you're going to get this back. Here, look at it. I can yes. see, you know, the moles on my arm, the hairs, all the details. Look at this. I'm going to give it back to you. Huh. You know, that's, that's yeah. the communication. It's like telepathic. Mm hmm and so, so then what I'm feeling right then is a, um, I'm feeling the subtle body, you know, I'm just feeling, uh, do, do you have any uh, feeling of the subtle body, Roy, or not? It's, it's uh, I, kind of I'm a, like a body a, that's whole. It's, if, it's, if it's kind of related to the astral plane, I'm in it all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm just, I'm just having a feeling of, of this, um, uh, this subtle body, which is whole. Well, and, and I'm, I'm thinking more that it's like, uh, uh, almost like um, this, this is the new vessel 
the, 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 the vessel that was created through some kind of alchemical um, uh, completion of something. But anyway, well, Gary, do you have the, a last word on this? And maybe then you can give us a dream. Uh, I think you, you pretty much, you know, said anything I could think of. <laughs> well, I know, but I'm still. I, I wish think you told us about the fence at the outset, though. I think that, yeah, that that you know, was a beautiful outset, part of it. Was, you know, a big part of it. Well, it's just so. It's just a beautiful image. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's just see. It, it's sort of to me. It sets the setting. You know, I'm I, I'm in this beautiful ambient space of scattered light. You know, I've climbed a, of this middle plane and, and entered another plane that was separated by something that's woven. So the woven aspect represents a, a feminine aspect because the feminine is the weaver. You know, she's the, uh, the Norns. The three Norns are the weavers of fate, you know. So you've crossed over the woven, uh, the weaving of fate the middle of the plane, this woven fence is representing the, the weaving of fate by the three norns. And then you've entered into this, this realm of the unconscious where there is, seems to be a feminine light, a lunar light. And there stands the shadow with um, the grail vessel. You know, I mean, it's, um, it is very like, um, something like I would feel if I was Parsifal, you know, a little bit, you know, um, and it's, it's also is reminiscent of the uh, wounded king, the Fisher King being healed, you know, what ails the uncle, you know, and uh, that's the healing word, you know, so, but uh, it, it, what do you think of this ex idea of that you climbed this middle plane of the of woven fate you know yes i believe that's you true went past yes. it yes. you went you you went past fate and this yes. is what uh, Idris was talking about the left hand has to do with destiny and the right hand i didn't mean to cut you off there Idris, but i thought you had hit such a hard uh, note yeah. of amplification there just with the palmistry aspect yeah. i didn't want to stray too far off from that because Definitely, it was very actually, powerful. That was constellating the yeah the center core points, and even about astrology, I don't use it as a prediction. I use it like they, it has it's filled with rich imagery. I just use it yeah. for its uh, access to symbols. Well, because you'd hit a gong with the, yeah. with the palmistry, and I wanted to stick with that because it was it was really hitting us. Well, um, now now Ivan, do you have any comments or anything, or then we'll hear Gary's dream. I don't have anything to add on that. Was nice to okay. Me. Well, all we know is if we ever ask Ivan for a dream, it's going to be a doozy. So we have to wait, though, because uh, we got to hear Gary's dream. <laughs> Gary's got good dreams. Are you ready, Gary? So I go to a large house regularly okay. where there are a number of women that I'm friends with. We sit in the dining area and talk amiably. There is also an older man there that does the same. Somehow, I am in charge of a child that is in the attic in a very large bathtub that is being filled. I think that I must go check on her and race up the stairs. On the last flight of stairs, I can see the entire structure of the house is under a tremendous load and is literally vibrating. It actually makes some noise. As I start up the last stairs, they bend so much, I think they will break under my load. I stop, but then think if I do not go up, the entire house is at risk. I go up the stairs, see the child in a, see the child in a very large tub, and go over and pull the drain plug. I drain about half the water. The house is now okay. I stay and play and talk with the child. Oh God, this is so, uh, this is one that we're gonna have to go through. This is very rich. Let me start out with that. Okay, 
So first of all, let's just go through it part by part. Do you mind? I mean, I, I'm going to teach, use each part as if it's the only part. Okay, you're in a large house, house with a number of women that you know, and you're talking amiably. Right, and I and I and a, you know, like it's something that keeps happening. I go there, and, you know, it's like something that's happening regularly. Okay, so this is a place you go to. You go to a, a house of many rooms. Uh, and there is a, uh, 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 the feminine principle is, is um, very strong and you uh, talk with it amiably. So uh, comfortably. And um, I would think in a, it's a non-sexual way or something, you know, it's Oh just, yeah, no, it's like just yeah. totally a friend's thing. Yeah. Just uh, so, so it's a, it's a house of the feminine. Yeah. Okay. It's the house of the feminine and it has many rooms and you visit there often. And it's, it's not in, um, it, it is, is to relate to the feminine, but in, in a human way and uh, a, a, a not a, a libidinal way at this point. Okay. Now there's also an older man there. Right. And right. Now, what did you have to say about him? I don't know much about him, but he seems to have the same relationship with him. Okay. So he's probably something to do with the, the wise old man. We don't know yet, but let's just say he is. Now, you, okay, now that's the setting. It's the house of the feminine, has many rooms. And there is also Merlin is there, you know. Uh, the ancient uh, sage Merlin is there uh, it's sort of mysteriously and he's had this same relationship too and then you're in charge of a child or children hey, just one child uh, you're in charge of a child who's pardon me I think it's a girl okay you're in charge of a girl child who is in a, uh, a very large bathtub you don't, you only know this, you don't, because you haven't went to check on her yet, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she is, she, she can only be reached by an ascent, okay? Correct? She can only, uh, well, I have to go up like three flights of stairs. Three flights of stairs, that's important. So, so it's a four-storied house. Yeah, yeah, it's tall. Yeah. It's four stories is kind of interesting. So you're going to go through four levels. Okay, so then you go upstairs and then you find that this house has a great load on it. So it, it, it's carrying a heavy burden and its timbers are being stressed. Right? Right. Yes. And, and so you're going up the stairs and you think that it becomes more stressed as you approach the fourth floor where the child is, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, when, when you get up to the fourth floor, the highest floor, where the, um, the principle of, of youth, of, of the feminine uh, principle, you know, it, it, it's the promise of youth, of the feminine principle, is up there in a, uh, in a vessel of the unconscious, okay? A very large vessel filled with the unconscious. You drain it halfway, okay? And then didn't you say that the stress in the house was relieved by that? Wow. Okay, so let's go through this again. I mean, don't, don't you think this is kind of uh, quite a fairy tale here? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so uh, we, we go into a house that is, uh, uh, that is under the, um, uh, the feminine principle, okay? It's a, it's a four-storied house. You know, so it, it's, a quite, it's, it's a mandala, kind of. You know, it's kind of a house of, of a mandala. And uh, uh, the wise old man is there. So the self is there. The self is in every mandala, you know. And uh, then um, you're in charge 
of the growth of the, the promise of youth of the feminine principle. I mean, they're, the creative aspect of the feminine, um, you've been put in charge of that for some strange reason, because it doesn't seem like you would be the obvious choice. Well, it you, seems like it would be the last, it seems like it'd be one of the women. None of, yeah, it yeah. Make sense. Yes, I mean, you've been put in charge of, you, you at least need to be the nurturer of the, uh, of the promise of youth of, of the creative feminine, okay? That's your role, is that you are the mediator of the growth of the feminine mm -hmm. in this house of the four. You know, that's what Be Barbello is called. She's the goddess of four, you know? And uh, you, you've been put in charge of the, um, the creative aspect of the feminine in this house of four. It's, you're the mediator, you're the catalyst, okay? Now, the only way that you can uh, start this catalyst, and first of all, the house is under great stress because the, um, uh, no one is tending this creative fem feminine aspect. For some reason that creates a great heaviness. Mm -hmm. It's almost like Saturnine weight you know, uh, like Saturn is very heavy. So the, the, the house has a great load on it because um, there is no one there tending the creative feminine principle, which you are the mediator of. The ego consciousness must have a relationship with the anima or all is lost. What do you think about that? scary <laughs> especially considering my other dreams with the anima hmm. yes but i mean this this is saying that the your house your wholeness is is uh is is very heavy and the only way that you're going to re give relief to it is to have a relationship with the nascent creative feminine anima within yourself which would be the anima and she's also is not in the outer world she's in the inner world so you have to have a you have to it's a, it's saying until you have a living relationship or till you actually get and 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 be put in charge of this because you are in charge of it you you are in charge of the of the of the creative feminine principle in the house of four, this mandala with the self who's there too, you know, and until you get up there and tend to it. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to take and you're going to, um, you're going to, you're going to take this creative feminine who is in somewhat, I would say, of the masa confusa, you know, I mean, she's in a, in a very large tub where, where there's the, the unconscious waters are all the way to the top. Well, you need to create a, a balance between the inner and the outer world. So you need to release um, some of the flooding aspects of the unconscious and let the light of spirit, which would be the air, the ego awareness, the pneuma, there needs to be half pneuma and half uh, of water, not all water, you know. So when you put half pneuma into this alchemical vessel, which is at the highest level of the mandala, the whole house um, experience is relief. It, it loses its um, aspect of that everything is under stress every beam is um, under a great weight um, okay now let's hear from other people I'm sorry but I think this is a beautiful dream what, what do you think Roy you Roy is is, is an amazing you're more amazing every time you say something but go ahead and say another thing well, I like the uh, alchemical imagery of the vessel 
and halfway, to drain it halfway, which is in the middle, balance, and there's too much water. So you need to put heat in there and drying and get it in the middle. That's the burden and responsibility mm -hmm. that I think is trying to communicate. I don't know what that entails. Yeah, and there's an ascent of an ascent you know, a three-storied ascent. And as he's ascending, the house in the, in the short range is becoming more stressed. But once he reaches the top and allows Numa to come into the chemical vessel, then all the stress is relieved to some extent. But the idea is somehow Gary has to get from the bottom floor to the top floor and as he does it it creates more weight and but when he reaches the top and allows the pneuma to enter the alchemical vessel it starts the process of of the um uh, of of uh of balance now charles are we making you very tired and exhausted oh he, uh, yes no no you're okay well, this is, I'll tell you, this is, this is uh, hard work. It really is. Um, but, but what I think is, is the more attention you give to something uh, and cook it with your brain or with your ego, um, it, it gains in power. But go ahead. What do you think? What do you think, Charles? Oh, um, yeah, I mean, I find the image of the child in the bathtub particularly, um, it seems like that's maybe the, the center point of the dream. Um, and, you know, I mean, it just, uh, I, I can't exactly articulate it, but it just does seem like a very, a grand type of dream the you know the large house where there's the old men conversing with the women there um and it's like it's almost like the house where um like the house of alchemy itself and the house of uh the house of the self I, so to speak um, it, it really has that form yeah um, and you know, all I can really get from it in particular is that um, whatever the child kind of represents, it's, uh, there is a um, very um, urgent need for uh, it not to go fully into the unconscious and be submerged in it. Like it has to be... Um, I, I suppose it has to be halfway or at least not be fully submerged. Um, and uh, that, uh, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a, with, with the whole house under an incredible amount of stress like that. Um, yeah. It just seems like it's, uh, it's I don't know. It's kind of like, like your you dream. Really use, so you need islands. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't want to lose the, the the child to just total submersion, and the it unconscious. Needs, it needs. I think it. The the fact that what is it going to fill up with when you empty it? It fills up with air, and then, which is spirit. What do you, what do you? Which is logos, by the way. It's so now it's it's half feminine and half masculine. It's half logos and half uh, unconscious. What do you think, Tim? Well, to me, I, I get a real strong sense of the of the four levels of the conjunctio. Yes. Um, you know, going exactly. from the four to the three to the two to the one. Yes. Um, and I'm sure that that um, you've done a lot of a lot of psychological work. It seems like you like draining half of the tub is making a lot of your unconscious material, um, bringing it into consciousness. And so 
it makes sense to me that the rest of the house all of a sudden becomes really stable. That just feels to me like that's exactly right. So I get the sense that it's kind of a congratulatory dream for doing such good work because you've got the, the child, mm -hmm. this kind of holy child in, in the position of balance and you're up in the fourth floor. So, you know, the work is almost done. It just seems like this is the end of a cycle maybe. But I just, I just find it very positive and, and uh, compelling. It's kind of unlike one of my dreams. I would be going down four floors into the basement. Uh -huh. So I don't know what that means. Oh, what do you think, Kevin? Um, yes, um, <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I, think, um, I think, again, like I like to connect dreams from the past and this is, in a sense, the house of the feminine. As, as, as I say, you know, this is the house of the great mother, um, uh, which is emphasizing the feminine aspect, which is, I would say, the queen aspect of, of the divine royal couple, of the self. And so there's still some masculinity in it with a wise old man. Um, I feel like, uh, Gary, with your previous dream, it has been about connecting with the self from a bodily level, you know, with the bear animal and, uh, and the elf. Uh oh, we lost him a little bit. I, I like the four levels. The, the highest level might be the sublimatio, you know. Uh, you know, I don't know what happened to Kevin as soon as he comes back. Well, hopefully get him, but as, we'll, we'll let him talk as soon as he gets back. Um, what, do, what do you think, Ivan? And then we'll see what Idris thinks. And, and I just want to ask Idris, um, just to yes. give him a, yeah, but let's, uh, let's hear from Ivan. And then I, I just wanted to I, just uh, give you a little, um, talk to you a little bit about uh, how Jung interprets dreams, just a little bit. But what do you think, Ivan? Well, I thought this was a really cool dream. There was so much symbolism in, in the, and there's, symbolism all connected with each other i got this feeling that it was a a dream about creation um in, in this dream there is all these aspects of the feminine but they're adults and then you have this aspect of the child uh up above and you are in this nurturing role even though there's generally like the feminine would be considered more of the nurturing role um in this case, you are going up there, you are ascending in order to nurture this child. Um, and so it almost makes me think that in, in the context of this dream, you are an agent of creation and you must balance and bring this child from the unconscious to the conscious realm to make the house stable. Um, what I'm trying to think more about is, is what the wise old man means. That is, he's very, um... Now, can you describe once more what he does, Gary? He does, he, he said you, he does something similar to you, but he's been doing it longer or what? Well, what all I know is it seems every time I go there, he's there and he's also engaging the women in amiable conversation. So all I know is we have kind of a similar role, you know, within the social context. Yeah. Yeah, but um, you didn't see notice anything too mysterious about him, other than he's old. Yeah, so well, he's a Senex character. Stuff on, you know. I mean, he's had what? I think he, he definitely had a hat on. Him. He had a hat on. Might have had a cloak. Well, there you go. He's some, somewhat has a magical aspect. He's almost. Uh, to me, he, he's, a, he's a description of between Wotan or Odin, you know, wandering, the wanderer Odin and, uh, and uh, Merlin. Mm. A little bit. Uh, now, Idris, can I just ask you a couple questions and then you can tell us something? What, what part of India do you come from? Are you there, Idris? Oh, I'm not sure if he's there. 
Idris? I don't know if we can hear him. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to know, uh, Idris, one uh, thing. What, what part of India do you come from? Can you from? hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, I think maybe you're off. Uh, the video is frozen. Okay. Yeah. Well, the video is frozen, but we can hear you. Now I can hear you. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. I just wanted to know uh, what part of India do you come from and what is your background? Yeah. So I was born in Afghanistan okay. and I'm originally an Afghan. Then our family lived in India for quite a few years. In 2004, we came to Canada. Now I'm Canadian. So oh, Canadian, so Afghan. In Canada. But I have experience of living in India. Yes. What part of Canada are you in? British Columbia. British Columbia. You know, see, this is what is a very mysterious because it's so bright there, you know. And so what it is it about uh, probably uh, 630 there? 627. Yes, you're right. All right. 627. So um, did you, uh, what was your uh, uh, religious background? Did you have a religious background? Uh, I, I, yes. Yeah, I'm born Muslim. I'm mm -hmm. a Muslim, uh, Sunni, um, Sunni Muslim. And uh, in my teen years, I became really interested in Sufism. And they're very much aligned with uh, Gnostics. Yes. So now, uh, Sufis are uh, let me, let me ask you this. a little bit universal. Like uh, you don't have to belong to any religion to be a Sufi. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Well, yes. I mean, Sufi, I mean, you know, Henri Corbin, you know, is a, a Sufi. Yes. You know, yes. Um, now, now um, did you, um, what's, where did you go to school? Um, f first few years of my life, uh, I went to a Catholic school in India. And then um, until end of my ninth grade, I studied in Afghanistan. Then we went back to India and I finished my school, went for three years of engineering there. Then we came to Canada. And in Canada, uh, I studied here um, my bachelor's. Okay. Bachelor's of arts. Okay. Uh, in what, what field? Criminology. Criminology. I had lots of psychology courses too. I wanted to do okay. a second uh, major, but I dropped the idea in the last year because I didn't want to work in the profession. But I wanted the knowledge. So the knowledge, I was attracted to the knowledge. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Where did you uh, learn palmistry and astrology and and in uh, India? Yeah, and it's almost like uh, I don't think they call it this in India, but uh, you, you're almost um, doing a um, palmistry of of the body and yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like and the faces. And you learn this in India of too. The now, body did you, features and appearance? Who did you yes, learn this from? Ahead. Who did you learn it from? Uh, about, about body parts and hands, mostly from books and mm -hmm. also personal observation, like people I closely knew, I would see the resemblance. One, one thing was striking, like even as a child, I remember when I was in school, I would be very careful about boys who had like mark in their head, especially if they are shaved, you would see that they had head injuries. They usually would lose their temper very quickly and do very crazy stuff when they were angry. So I noticed people who have had no head injury, like they, there is no hair missing on their head. They usually were very balanced people. But on the other hand, from even like early times, like I noticed this behavior difference. Well, you I know, also young... noticed like uh, color change on the skin and eye color change and all that. Please go ahead. Oh, well, now, did you read these in, in English or did you read them in, in English? Language? In English, yes, in English, and they were yes. uh, were they older books or were they newer books? Uh, so mostly I read palmistry. Then uh, I stopped palmistry and I studied astrology. With astrology, I even was attending like uh, for about a year a weekly class. Um, it would be at one of our friends' home. Sometimes it would be at another participant's home, but um, like two, two, three hours a week. It was very interesting because. It was not about prediction. It was more about like symbols and going deep into what human being is and all that. Very similar to alchemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. When, you know, Jung was very interested in, in his uh, student, Lillian Fry uh and his daughter too. Uh, yes. I, I think it was, um, I don't know if it was Greta or something, it was a very accomplished astrologer. Okay. But anyway, um, uh, 
I, I just think that's it's very interesting. The one thing I would say um, when we're doing dream work, and it's nothing, uh, start out, always start out, never stray away from the dream. You know, yeah. start out uh, from use use the dream images as if they're the only information we have. You know, okay. now your vast knowledge. I'm just now. This is not a, a criticism, but I'm just saying. Yeah, let's, uh, to, I'm learning. To, yeah, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but you have a vast knowledge, and I think it's going to be very helpful in amplifying, like on the palmistry. I thought that was wonderful, but I would say you start out with the with the images of the dream and act it. Well, we always let, let me just say myself. I act as if it's my own dream because I don't have any way of, of doing it. Yeah, but if you start from the own your just the images of the dream and don't ever stray from it, at least start there. Mm -hmm. And then after we've started there, then we can bring in some of the amplifications. But if we bring in the, so the one Makes thing, sense. well, the only thing I was, I was thinking of is when, when you um, gave the vision of which was a very powerful vision of all the people on the stretchers and things, you know, then you ask what this had to do with my soul. Well, yes. I don't really think that this was that type of dream. It was a, it was a foreshadowing of an earthquake. So, yeah, so, so I, I would was, agree completely. Yes, yes. But I was yeah. wondering if I could do any active imagination to change it or change the outcome or change. The, I don't. I think, don't know. Now you, you, okay. Yes, you could. But then you know what you would be conducting in? You'd be doing white magic or black magic. Yes, definitely. And that's yes. what the shamans do. You know, definitely. but that's not what that. we do in Jungian psychology. <laughs> I, know, but I know. It works. It does. It works. Yes, because uh, I'm, I'm don't pretty want to involved do it. in that. Yes, it hurts uh, on it the hurts. spiritual level. Yeah, because I have this spiritual life going on, unfolding, and and I was interested if there are things related to active imagination. But now I know what your feedback would be. Well, yes, but well, I'm just saying now. Now I'm not saying this based on my own knowledge. This is what I've heard from I people who actually I believe what you're saying that you I could see. do that. But I this understand. is actually done. You know, mm -hmm. like in in Haiti yeah. and other areas, you and but the problem with either black magic or white magic mm -hmm. is it injures us. Definitely, because we change we we change things. Yes. yes. So I mean, yeah. Well, yes, but it, it ends up that that you can. Uh, well, well, one thing Jeffrey Raff says, and and he's far from an occultist. He says okay. you don't do active imaginations about living people. And the I reason see. is, is that you can injure them, you yes. know, and unintentionally. Mm -hmm. And uh, what um, uh, I, I, Michael Harner said this too, is that you don't, um, you, you don't, well, see, you know, like the shamans would yes. create an icicle arrow and, and aim it at mm -hmm. their uh, enemies and they would end up killing their enemy. Yeah. But then the arrow comes and hunts them. Definitely, definitely. And it doesn't yeah. rest until it kills them. Mm -hmm. So the, the one that shoots the arrow. Mm -hmm. So that's even you can do that, but yeah. that's it that's, costs. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not that's um, not that's not the um, that that's not the path of uh, the mm -hmm. spiral path, the linear, the path of, of, of circumambulating the center mm -hmm. and uh, making the ego less and making the um, inner world uh, uh, greater in power in your ego awareness. Now we'll we'll talk more about this later. Definitely. And I'm not. I'm I'm saying this in, in just a spirit of education mm -hmm. of all of us, you Definitely. know. And and it's not that I know everything, yeah. you know. But um, I, I'm just saying that the you have a vast knowledge and it's going to come in very handy. Let's put it. Yeah, sometimes I was thinking that if I could pray and ask God to stop it from happening or something, I felt guilty for no well, reason. Well, yes. But yeah, I couldn't. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, to go back in time and do it. No, okay, no, let me I tell you something. <laughs> my wife, my wife's family had a mm -hmm. horrible history. And I, I don't want to admit it, but I just yeah. the other night, I uh, uh, did a <laughs> Google, online Google right search. <laughs> I did a Google search. Can I go back in time? Yeah. And change things. Yeah. You know. And it said, no, you can't. Yeah. So that's so true. I'm I'm with you, but but okay. I'm, I'm, I mean the whole idea here of like uh, the beauty 
of, of Gary's dream and the beauty of uh, Roy's dream and the synchronicity of uh, Tim's uh, vision. And I think you're gonna find, I, I, I don't know, last week, Charles and Ivan just had beautiful dreams. And I, if you come every okay. time, you're gonna hear a lot from yeah. Charles and Ivan and they have a very gift uh, for a, a very mature dream maker who's very wonderful. But what we want to do is we want to, we want to behold the beauty of the dream, Definitely. you know? So it isn't yeah. so much a fortune telling thing. No, obviously, it's, yes. Well, and, and, mm -hmm. and so anyway, I, 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 and anyway, this is just, um, you, you know, keep holding on here because it, yes. it'll be all good. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin, uh, did you, we, you got rudely interrupted. Did you want to finish your thoughts and we'll be done for the night? Okay, uh, just very quick. Um, yeah, so I just feel like, um, like I said, it has something to do with, with the feminine entering into a, I mean, it's a relationship to the feminine in, in a, how do you say this? Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like yeah, this is like a continuation of other dreams. Um, yes. So... Yeah, I don't have much more to say, really. Yeah, it, it's a wonderful. I, I I just love Gary's deadpan way of delivering a dream like this. It surprises yes. me. So deadpan, yes. and I'm listening. I'm just amazed. Okay, well, I, I also, Roy, I'm so glad you came. Don't you think this is going to be very fruitful going forward? I, at least I'm hoping that you are you are full of great fruit. So I hope you keep coming back. Yeah, I've been following all the dream sessions. Uh, it's just you quit recording. You didn't record the one last week. So I, that's oh, why I'm here. Yeah. That is why oh, I'm here. I am so I, sorry. I, I, you know, it's I like a soap check. opera. I'm addicted. You, well, know. I, you didn't get to hear Ivan's dream? No, no. Yeah, okay, well, I, I wasn't here. And then, uh, then I saw the YouTube didn't get recorded. And I, I was like, dang, it just, I, oh, I got shoot. it. Yeah. Okay, well, I will. I have it and I'll upload it. Okay, because you got to hear it. I mean, oh, Ivan's, thanks, Ivan's thanks. dream was beautiful. I mean, it was, uh, 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 I, anyway, I will upload it uh, tonight. I'm sorry. But Roy. Hey, um, Roy, uh, how long have you been following the dream session? I'm just curious. Since they started. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I write on the YouTube page. Nobody ever answers. Oh, <laughs> see, I didn't now even know. I, now. Now I'm on email, you know, I can do the email. Yes, list. you can do it on the email. Yeah, well, I am sorry, Roy. See, I don't even know if they get posted, you know, so I better get in there and, and post. And I will put the last one on there because I do have it recorded here. And and it was, um, I think it's really worth it to hear Ivan's dream. And that was a really good example of a, a kind of a painful process to get to the end of it. But I think Ivan, though, your dream every bit of it now what was the end of the dream what what did the what did that um person say at the end of the dream oh wait which dream are we talking about oh uh, the one you had last week well the one we had last week um we were just doing a puzzle together yes the girl okay yeah see uh at the end of the dream we find out that she's the goddess of puzzles of of the ineffable and she wants um ivan to join her in it can you, can you just quickly tell us the dream again, Ivan? Uh, sure. So um, I'll just go off my memory here. I had it written down, but I don't know the page. So um, I'm uh, playing volleyball. There's going to yes. be a volleyball game starting. And I, I don't really like volleyball in mm -hmm. real life. Um, <laughs> and so I'm trying to blend, blend in and kind of uh, be in inconspicuous part of the game and uh they want to put me at the front of the net because i'm tall and so um right before the game starts um someone kind of uh i, I notice a girl uh to the side of me and she's um wearing a white dress with dark hair um she's very petite and small um, um and uh she she's mute, but she indicates that she wants barely to audible. Is yeah, said. yeah, it's like I can tell that she's talking, but I can't really hear her. Um, 
And so she indicates that she wants me to pick her up. So I pick her up in my arms and we uh, spin in circles. And then she indicates that she wants me to set her down and do a puzzle with her. Yeah, well, see, now now what I, I see to this, and I'll just be real quickly, quick about it. And Idris, you're on deck next time, okay, if you're here. Okay, great. Yeah, you bring a dream. But uh, it, it's the, 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 the image to me was that um, the abstract um, act of throwing the uh, uh, wholeness back and forth between the inner world in the form of a sphere is not suited to Ivan. He needs the personified. No, he needs the personified feminine, who he who he then takes, and he he spins in circles, in in, in forming his own mandala with with the feminine. Mm -hmm. So it's a more personified way of of the of creating a circle. And then she, this 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 barely audible goddess, invites him to um, uh, do a. Um, a puzzle to to um, to to participate in the irrational with him with her, you know. I mean, I, I think we could say a little bit more about it, but that was just a quick uh, a summary. But go ahead, Kevin. What were you gonna say? I just I didn't. I just needed to say this. Um, I, I try to uh, I try to think about why I have difficulty time co uh, commenting on the last part of Gary's dream. And I realized because he made such an impression on me. It's just, it's just so, the, the image is so deep that I have really difficulty like. But when you go up to the highest yes. level, where the creative feminine is completely immersed in the unconscious and just, you yeah. fill it, uh, you, 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 you add numa and the, yeah. the, 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 and the timbers stop creaking. You know, it's yes, just because, very beautiful. Um, okay. I just wanted to say that because I, I felt like uh, this dream is somewhat also a birth of the feminine. It's, it is. Me, it's that I mean, his, that's his care. job. Yes, that's so. Gary's job. Is the birth of the feminine? Yeah, I think don't, that's perfect. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, next time we'll start with Edress and um, uh, so get, bring us a good dream, Edress. And now, Idris, I, I, I'm not. Uh, I, I, we're, I, I we're all learning even to, now, but yes, if the time well, is I up, think, then we will leave it for. Yeah, next well, bring it, yeah. bring it next time because it's getting a little late, and Definitely. I'm an old, old man, and I think, uh, and I'm not as old. You as well, seem I, younger, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Ageless, Roy, yes. And and uh, boy, I think we got a great group here. Roy is uh, going to be a great asset, Roy, and I will put that new uh, dream up. I'm glad you're you're here. Where where do you are you located, Roy? Uh pretty close to Miami, Florida. Okay, great. So it's a little bit later for you, but um, anyway, um, if you can make it every once in a while, um, you're a great asset, and I will get that other uh, dream up there. But uh, this is really my favorite part of the thing, and uh, I think especially uh, we've got some wonderful dream uh, people here, you know. So and welcome, Idris. And Kevin, I think it's you're up too. Thank you. Yeah. Next time, Kevin, you bring us a dream. Kevin is is Norwegian and Phil Filipino. And I'm I'm Norwegian and I don't know what else. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So yes. Okay. So uh, anyway, we'll see you guys uh, next time Monday at uh, at uh, 7 p.m. Chicago. But thank you very much. It's a it's a lively session. Bye, yeah, I learned a lot and enjoyed around Steve, you guys. Thank you very yeah. much. Each one. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you, Tim. Craig. Okay. Yeah. Bye, Idris. Bye-bye.